God is the source of everything good and every perfect, everything perfect, the book of James says. Power is good and it's meant for good, but the moment power is used to hijack your free will, to coerce or manipulate, no matter how justifiable you may think it is, it's evil. God, who is all wise and loving, He won't use His supreme power to control or manipulate us. So why do religious people try to do this? Matthew 28, verse 18, Jesus said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And yet Jesus won't resort to control tactics and override your free will. You know the old saying, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts absolutely. That's only the pursuit of power, void of God's oversight, void of His love. You were made for power, and that's why praying with results, let me say that again, praying with results is so critical to your design. But you have to be trained to use that power or you'll abuse it. Yes, you can pray wrong prayers, even bad prayers, manipulative, controlling, evil prayers. Look at James chapter 4, verses 2 to 3. You are jealous and covet and your desires go unfulfilled. So you become murderers. To hate is to murder as far as your hearts are concerned. You burn with envy and anger and are not able to obtain the gratification and the happiness that you seek. So you fight and you war. You do not have, listen to this, you do not have because you do not ask. He's talking about a prayer. You don't ask God with a prayer. Then verse three, or you do ask God, that's a prayer for what you want, and yet you fail to receive, why? Because you ask with wrong purpose or wrong motives and evil, selfish motives. Your intention is to spend it in sensual pleasures. So if God were to answer that prayer, it would actually be destructive to your life, to your family, your future. God is saying, yes, it's possible to pray evil prayers motivated by jealousy and hate. Don't do it, he's saying. It could hurt you. It will hurt you and it'll hurt others. Of course, God doesn't empower those prayers, but it does you damage. How? Well, it starts to welcome something called cognitive dissonance into your soul. Cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is a common phenomenon that occurs in people's lives much more often than you would really even think. Experts describe cognitive dissonance as basically the internal war within a person when their beliefs directly oppose their words or actions or behavior. You're believing one thing, but you're doing another thing. Think of it. When your beliefs oppose your actions, then you experience great stress and the pain of cognitive dissonance. We naturally try to move away from pain. That means something's got to give. You tolerate yourself being internally pulled apart, drawn and quartered mentally. 